Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here to introduce you all to the the modern next gen CMO command center. So everything that you need to manage your digital marketing and your digital business at large. Before I bring out the CMO doc, which is what it's short for, that's what this t-shirt says, DOC. Um, I want to just share with you a moment on why we developed this, the CMO doc to begin with. So as the previous uh, speaker mentioned that, you know, marketing is interesting. We're, we're balancing art and science. You have to do branding, you have to do digital marketing. So for today, I'm going to talk about the science part of marketing. So I would say over the last 20 years, we have outscienced ourselves. Okay, between the advent and CRM, integrated marketing, person, uh, personalization, segmentation, marketing automation. Marketing, um, as all of you know, is not a cost center anymore. We're profit center. My boss, the CEO, looked to me to drive top line revenue growth. Okay, and somehow along the way, whether we like it or not, we became quants. Okay, big time. So today, um, you know, Gardner published that uh, three years ago, and I get drafted by Benioff just by every year on the CMO versus CIO uh, discussion at Dreamforce, which is CMO today. Uh, and those of you in the room who are marketing leaders, we own more budget, we have more resources, and God knows we have enough tools. Okay, to deliver amazing content, engagement, acquisition, nurture, and retention. Okay, so it's been wonderful. But I think what's happening here is, as the previous speaker alluded to, that we're overwhelmed and we're somewhat lost in a sea of tools and data, some of which are marketing performance data, some of them are sales performance, some of them are customer performance, but we don't have a single source of truth. And that is the reason why we developed the CMO Digital Operations Center. Uh, back in the old days, for those of you who deal with CIOs, we had the NOC, right? It shows all the network, all the system performance, so you know your digital stack, how it's working. Similar concept, but for CMO. So this is your Starship Enterprise. Okay, as you go forward and manage your future. So with that said, um, I'd like to introduce you to the CMO doc. All right. So um, you are looking at a very interesting picture here. So I'm going to back out of this for a moment. Okay. Uh, there are three segments to the CMO doc. And those of you in the back, if you can't see clearly, please come on up. All right, so in the middle is a representation of every single real user who's interacting with your digital assets, whether it's on your website or through your mobile applications. Every one of them are real users. So they come in clusters, okay? So um, it so happens so that we monitor, manage, and we test top 39 of the top 100 internet retailers from Walmart, Target, Nordstrom, Etsy, all the way to Lowell's, and just name it. Um, we know what this means. So you're looking at all the user interactions with your digital business across the web. And this gives you a visual way to manage how well you're performing. So you set the threshold on user experience, responsiveness, and conversion, okay? They vote with your eyeballs and they vote with your pocketbook. We look at both, okay? So if you're green, then you're in good shape. So you're fine in Saudi Arabia, okay? But if you're yellow, pay attention. If you're orange, potential problem. If you're red, you got a problem, okay? Now, you're running your marketing program across all the marketing channels. You don't know what's causing this, so you got to be able to drill down, okay? So this gives us a very visual way to identify by exception. There are terabytes of what we call beacons or data behind this globe, and we synthesize them in such a way that, you know, you can go in and look at this with your CDO, the CMO, all your marketing demand gen people, even your CIO and your DevOps people, and you're looking at the single source of truth, okay? So what I'm going to show you now is a drill down. So we were here at, at Europe earlier, and there was a little red dot here right above UK. So that tells me my marketing programs in the UK is experiencing performance issues, okay? So let's take a look at what that means, okay? So here we have the drill down view into the UK, okay? And I'm showing you all the same color coding 
of what's happening with your e-commerce or n-commerce sites or just your B2B sites, okay? It's color-coded, red is not good, green is good, okay? That tells me which pages are experiencing responsiveness problems. And God help you if your payment confirmation page, your shopping cart, or some of the critical pages, okay? And the next view that we can actually show is not just the product pages, we can even drill down, as I showed you earlier, by city. I can tell you which city, just pick the red ones, okay? That's having the worst performance. And this could be your mobile application that's not rendering well over Vodafone or one of the, net, the, the network carriers. So now you have the beginning of a forensic science to say that, hey, I'm not converting well. I'm spending tons of money on PPC. I'm spending tons of money on online advertising or social media targeting UK. They're not working, so you keep going. So this gives you a way to triangulate and drill down. Now, if you want to drill down some more, we talked about pages. So it's showing me certain pages that are not performing correctly. I come to Anne, that's my name, my data science workbench. That's what we call it. In other words, it's your dashboard. Um, again, this is derived based on petabytes of data of all your user experiences happening in real time. So there's no guessing here. This is actually real time what's happening. So what you're seeing here, which is interesting, um, really, it's an amalgamation of different parts of the performance that you need to pay attention to. So let's take a look at the first one, okay. So if I can learn how to drive with this iPad, I have fat fingers, so when I touch something, sometimes it takes forever to load. Okay, so this one hopefully will do the trick. So let's take a look at the conversion. So um, you're looking at a chart of how responsive your digital assets are, okay. Everything that's in green, I guess that's green, is your front end. So that's your website, your mobile application, all the front end, that's presentation layer, and possibly the application layer. And everything on the bottom, which is the, green, uh, the blue part, that's your back end. So that's your middleware, that's your database. And if you outsource your servers to Amazon AWS, Google, and, uh, Microsoft, Azure, um, this basically is a collection of how well they're performing. What this chart is telling me is that Almost 90% of my performance issues on why people are not converting is because of front end. And so that means one of three things. Typically, is your creative department versus your IT department. I am guilty. I love visuals. I love images. I love custom fonts. The problem is when you do that with your mobile app or your website, it is such a JavaScript and such a CSS style she hog that it slows everything down. And I don't know the rest of you, if I'm calling up and interacting with an application, it doesn't respond back to me within four seconds, I'm out of there. Typically, that's how it goes. And that goes across information seeking as well as transacting as well. So I know that I have a front end problem. And part of it, frankly, could be caused by a third party service I'm calling. A typical web page today has a bunch of sections for advertising. Right? You also have personalization like from Bizarre Voice. You have payment called in. You have customer ratings. You have all kinds of things. A page is a hybrid. Typically have 60 plus services, 18 of which are third party. So you are as fast as your slowest link. So if Google is not returning the ad, Twitter is not returning the ad, or your payment engine is not returning confirmation, you got a problem. And so this will sync, frankly, the whole transaction, if you will. So this is something that you can uh, focus on. At least now we're starting to kind of drill down into the various part of it. Now, there's so many pages on all of our website, and frankly, mobile applications as well. Where do you begin? So what this one is showing you is, I know it's hard to read, guys, with the, with the lighting, but these are page groups across the y-axis, and the blue bars are their, what we call the conversion impact score. These are the pages that can give you the highest ROI and sales conversion, and the green dots are the loading time, the responsiveness. The slowest one has the highest one, okay? What I'm trying to show you here is that you have to be able to tell your team to focus. You can't boil the ocean. But how do you go about deciding what part of the customer experience to optimize? This is how, okay? You focus and you prioritize, and this is all data-driven. And you can't do this by just calling it gut feeling, okay, per se. So that's something that to think about. Now, and the next part that I would like to show you is um, on mobile. So let's move over to the mobile device part, okay. 
So mobile is here to stay. Um, I think today, officially, about half of e-commerce traffic comes from mobile devices. About a third of the purchases are coming from mobile devices, and Google made it official as of May that you know, easily, right now, there's more searches done on mobile devices than on desktop. So you have to deal with it. But let's say you're trying to have a mobile app that you put out there to merchandise, whatever the case might be. Just on Android alone, there are 18,000 devices. Are you going to optimize your user experience for all 18,000 devices? No. Okay, so this is where big data science comes in. This thing, my, my, uh, I have so many PhD working at SOSTA. They call this a dimension co-concurrence chart. I need to come up with a different name for this one. But what this tells you is that you take all that mobile performance data and you want to find the relationship. You follow the red line. That is the line that has the highest um, performance issue. So what this tells you is that when you combine an Android OS with HTC phone using a Vodafone as a network carrier, that's where your performance problem happens. So now you can focus and you can prioritize. So this is a different way to manage digital marketing, to manage digital business going forward. It's almost like Starship Enterprise, I know, but it's intuitive. Once you get used to this, it's pretty amazing what you can do in real time. Okay. So with that said, let's go back to the CMO doc. All right, so I mentioned earlier that you know, the middle part is all your users in real time interacting with your site, with your digital assets, right? So we call that impulse, okay? It's embedded as a JavaScript into every single page, and we triangulate and we derive delays and conversion, everything else. So there's an empirical relationship between the user experience in the middle and all the marketing program that we have running on the site. So what I'm showing there are email marketing through Marketo. I'm running all kinds of PPC organic uh, search marketing programs. So I could easily bring up some of my regular online advertising program as well. And I have Twitter running. I have LinkedIn. I have Facebook. And I think you guys can relate to this. Typically, what happens today, I have to go to each one of the sources, unless I pay an agency a huge amount of money to find out how well they perform. Now, the good news is that every one of, those, uh, of these campaigns eventually bring people home to your digital page. So you can define a conversion as a download, as a purchase, or as filling out a form. You decide what that conversion is. Now you can map them across in real time on campaign, uh, how they perform across the world. So here's the thing that we, you and I don't get. I, I actually ran the first eBay uh, national TV advertising back in uh, 2000 when I was there. So I, I, I love the branding side of it. And what I got was gross reach point. I go, what does that mean? How many people came to my site? There's no interrelationship. I have to extrapolate, isolate any you know, ancillary causes. Now it's empirical. Okay, so I can actually see in flight, in real time, how these marketing campaigns across these multi-channel marketing channels actually perform from a customer experience and conversion perspective. Now I can shift my spend, I can optimize my programs, I can even optimize my front end and back end on the fly. The power is amazing, okay? So now on the left-hand side, um, you know, I spend all that money bringing the eyeballs to the site. Right, so they have to convert, so it's the offer, whole bunch of things, but I have a huge dependency on operations and, and IT to make sure that the site's performing well. So typically what happens today, they will tell me usually um, that there's a site performance problem, so therefore people were getting bounced out of there, they couldn't finish transacting. I usually hear about this through social media when people start complaining, okay? Or I hear about it days later and say, nah, sorry, you didn't reach your gross merchandise sales, target because X, Y, Z, but it's all after the fact. So now I can actually come to my IT group and have a common point of view on what's happening real time with conversion and performance. So for example, uh, one thing that's interesting to do is benchmarking my site against my competitors. So every one of those numbers in different colors on the top will be your competitor sites. So you plug in the number. So you know how well your site is performing against your competitors. If you can't measure it, you have no way to optimize it. Okay? Then I can even drill down what I call the waterfall. Okay? I can see 
different competitor sites, how they render their sites, what the customer experience is, when do people abandon ship. Okay, that's a huge change as well. Um, and so all of this gives me a vocab that is common between me, my CIO, even my development group. Now we're looking at the same thing, which is um, a refreshing change. And then lastly, what I want to talk to you about is um, the things my favorite. Um, this is a tough one to, to see, okay? So for example, if I run Cyber Monday, that was all the user experiences and conversion last year, and I know my highest conversion rate when the page was at 5.23 seconds, low time, I can actually use that data to extrapolate and project what this year's Cyber Monday is gonna be. And I can go to my, my operations team and say, if you can speed up by one second, here's what's gonna happen to my conversion, here's what's gonna happen to my gross merchandise sale. So it's a very powerful tool, and I just wanna kinda end by kinda giving you guys some, some thought um, to, to take home with. And that is, if you're Amazon, and if your site is slowed by about 100 milliseconds, that's 0.1 seconds, that means 1% drop in sales because there's less merchandising pages, less clicks, less item drop into the shopping cart, less AOV and less sales. Okay, that translates to $6.8 million. And if you're Google, 100 millisecond means 0.2% less searches per user. That means less ads, less clicks, less AdWords revenue to the tune of 45 million. And if you're Walmart, one second and Walmart's a big customer of ours, they actually understand one second in delay means 2% conversion drop. And FYI, that's 244 million a year, okay? So for those of you in the audience, you're spending marketing dollars, you're optimizing like you normally do. But if your site is not engaging and performing as it should, you're leaving money on the table to the tune of huge amounts. So I just wanna kind of invite you guys to think through that and really um, make sure that you're approaching this from a very rigorous data-driven perspective, okay? All right, um, how are we doing on time? Do we have a little bit time to show? We are? Okay, all right, thank you so much for your time. We'll be around and uh, to answer any questions that you may have. And for those of you that wanna download an O'Reilly ebook, we actually have an ebook on this thing that we just finished writing, and it's at sosta.com slash get the doc, D-O-C. Thank you for your time. <laughs> <laughs>